What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of Games Up. My name is Cameron McCulloch Keeble, and hopefully, you know me uh, as one of the three hosts that do this show. <clears throat> my two, <clears throat> <clears throat> my two, fe- <laughs> <laughs> my two fellow hosts can't join us today, Lawrence and Lewis, as they are in different parts of the country. Uh, but I am joined uh, by a guest, uh, Mark Silk. They're in hospital due to a horrific cough. Where have they caught that from? I, <clears throat> I'm sure I couldn't tell you. Hello, nice, nice to uh, be with you. Nice to be with you as well. Uh, now you might not, mo- uh, you might know Mark. He's in the middle. It's for the inters- inters- <laughs> <laughs> You might know Mark from various uh, things. Do you want to tell us some of the stuff? Ah, uh, you on? might know me from various cartoon characters and TV shows and commercials like Bob's Butchers. If we've got all kinds of meat, you'll be wanting to eat <laughs> Pork Street Porkington. No, I'm, I'm the, um, uh, my name's Mark Silk. My name is spelt M-A-R-C-S-I-L-K. If you want to put me on the Twitter, that's, I'm at that name. Yep. <laughs> but I, I, uh, day to day, I do the voices for a lot of cartoon shows and uh, TV characters and game characters and mm-hmm. film characters. Uh, so I am the voice of people like Johnny Bravo. Oh, mama. I tried there, man. And uh, I've worked on Star Wars. I was lucky enough to, to find myself in, in Abbey Road Studios with George Lucas working on episode one, being the voice of Axmo, the Congress of Malister, and Kyle with the right honourable delegate for the Trade Federation. Now, Teddy, get me a cup of tea. <laughs> and um, I, I, I get brought in for all kinds of really great shows and, and things I grew up with, like... Uh, Zikes, like it's really creepy, mm-hmm. Scoob. Right, Scoob? Yeah. scooby dooby doo and many, many others. Even things like, if you check on Netflix, type in Pingu. What's that, Pingu? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pingu. But and and but lots and lots of game characters too. Okay. Um. So obviously, this is a game a game centric podcast. Um. That's so... your very polite way of saying. Stop talking no, 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 about no, no, no. cartoons. We're talking about games. Talk about the famous voices. <laughs> um. No, that's all of those voices are incredible, but um. If people are listening here and very specifically interested in video games, they yeah. might know you from things like Black and White. Yeah, uh, uh, that was oh god, that was an amazing game to be part of. It's it's, uh, it's a fairly famous one now. It's fairly legendary for what it did. Yeah, um, what Peter Molyneux did with Black and White was really quite groundbreaking in terms of that god game, mm. where it really you know the world responded to the choices you made, and I got brought in to be the voice of. I think I did over. It was something like thirty characters. All, all, <laughs> these, all these, there were lots of little background things, and mm-hmm. and there was like a sea shanty and all kinds of other people that you met along the way. But but they were, they were little bits of business that you enjoyed uh, the further you got into the game. But the the characters that I did that were that followed you throughout the whole thing were the voice of good and evil, the voice mm-hmm. of good and <laughs> evil, and black and white. <laughs> oh, come on, Mark. come along, master. Be nice to them. The villagers will enjoy it, you know. <laughs> ah, what the hell? Throw a rock at them. They'll grow to the face. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because at the time, uh, I, I got a lot of sort of correspondence from people that either didn't believe or didn't realise that it was the same person doing both of them. Mm-hmm. And they thought it was an English person doing the one or they thought I just did the one and that there's an American person doing the other. Right. And if you check on, if you check on the internet, on, on YouTube somewhere, there is an outtake uh, of, of, uh, of me morphing from the one character to the other. Oh, right. So there's a whole bunch of outtakes from Black and White. And, and there's one saying, uh, uh, you know, d- uh, uh, evil one. Yeah. Yes, master. Yes, fella. <laughs> yeah. Did you know I, I have some very interesting news? What's that? The guy that does, the chair that does our voices. <laughs> There's a guy that does our voices? Yes, and it's the same person. <laughs> How does that work? Well, if you take my voice, Master, and then take it down a little, and a little more, and a little further, and then take him across the Atlantic, and then make him New York, he kind of got you. Oh, my God, that's incredible. <laughs> I know. Who'd have thought? Well, not me. So what you gonna do? Well, change back. Okay. So you take that, then you go a little higher and higher and higher, and then go back to the UK, and you go, there we go again, we're back. <laughs> um, and... <laughs> <laughs> It's always quite hard to move on from that because it's you have quite a it's quite a tour de force of voices and vocal talent you can go through. Well, that's very kind, of, but I mean that's those are the two main voices with with black and white, and mm-hmm. it's, it still looks good now. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and it's still playable. 
Mm-hmm. I'm guessing. Oh yeah, it holds <laughs> up. Black and white holds up a lot. Um, oh, we, but... we spent a long time on that. We mm-hmm. spent months recording that because uh, I, I, I would go to Lionhead Studios where Peter Molyneux was based. Mm-hmm. And that was exciting in itself, and um, and they were developing other projects as well that all under wraps at the time. But you sort of get to see little bits of hidden secrets along the way. And you go, my God, that's exciting. <laughs> and then the final the final recording sessions we did. A whole solid week of recording at, at uh, Electronic Arts' big studio, which was in uh, Chertsey, sort of by Gatwick way. Mm-hmm. And it was hidden in the countryside, and it was just a, m- it was like a James Bond lair, you know, where y- <laughs> this, this, you're, this huge, beautiful glass building sort of unfolds as you go around the corner in front of all these trees. And the, f- the entire front of the building was glass that was on a track. So that in the summer, you could press a button and the entire front of the building, the, like like door, like lift doors, opened up to let air in. But we, and the the studio there, we spent this whole week going through like a phone directory, like an encyclopedia of mm-hmm. all the di- of, of the lockdown script of all the different variations of of what could happen in in the, in the different worlds. And it was you know, long, long recording sessions, but uh, so enjoyable, and so rewarding. And, and the studio they had at Electronic Arts too it was so cool. Mm-hmm. They had this, um, they had they had this really a whole bunch of old keyboards. So if you're a tech head, I'm a massive tech head. I, lo- I, 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 right as a kid, I was pulling cables out and trying to figure out what, how you could make something better if you plug that into there. Mm-hmm. And to see this old synthesizer with all these patch cables and you know bits that distorted like crazy, and you had to you, know, you had to hit it on the hit it on the side of the of the of the machinery to to stop it from buzzing. But oh, it, it it was a lot of fun. That in fact, I've got I've got video mm-hmm. of some of those recording sessions that's never been released. Really, N- never been shown. And so at some point later on this year, I. I uh, I'd like to do something with that, so um, but that might appear on my site somewhere. That would be really cool. We should we'll look forward to seeing that. I think I'm wearing a particularly awful orange shirt in it. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to. We might, I have to come back here to one of your CGI guys and see if they can put put a shirt on me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to like pick out a shirt from a rack and yeah, 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 that could work. Maybe that Marilyn Manson you, one that you're wearing. It is. <laughs> I forgot I was wearing that today. Um. For those of us who don't know you from Black and White, you've been in various other things as well. Uh, the most recent Devil May Cry, uh, mm. PlayStation All Stars, yeah. Overlord, lots of things. Dominion Master, nah, <laughs> <laughs> all of that. Um, what do you think has been? The best is a bad word, but what do you think has been the one that stuck with you, other than Black and White, the most? I really enjoyed Overlord. Right. Uh, there's been lots of them that I've enjoyed for different reasons. I mean, the the very first thing I think I ever did in a game um, that was released, there was a game called Joe Blow that I did. It was the very first game I watched. It never got released in the end because they, um, I think they run out of finance. Yeah, right. But it was some PC game, and the quality of the graphics at that point, you know, the it was just as a, a new graphics card had been introduced, mm-hmm. and. Um, but people that wanted to do amazing 3D graphics, you had to have this kind of card for your PC. Well, they'd found a coder that could create the same level of graphics without the card. <laughs> wow. so, you, so you didn't need the... Basically, they'd found a guy and they nicknamed him Spock <laughs> because they said, they said, don't, if you see it, that's Spock. I said, okay. Uh, what, what, that's, okay. Uh, is there something wrong? Mm-hmm. I said, well, no, he has no social skills. <laughs> and he doesn't talk to anyone. If he just looks down at his keyboard all day. Just, just don't talk to him. <laughs> it was like they were telling you about a really dangerous reptile pet. <laughs> and, uh, don't look directly at his face. But the the, the first the first one I ever did was for Nintendo, mm-hmm. and it was a, a fighting game on the Nintendo sixty four. And the first thing I ever did was player one fight, <laughs> player two fight. Game over. That was it. Because <laughs> that that's all. That, that's the. It was such a small amount of memory they had in, in the in the cartridge. That's all they could fit in. Mm-hmm. But the the one that really stands out for me is, is one that I really loved being part of was uh, Overlord. And uh, great characters again, and just but a great script. Mm-hmm. That was the thing. The, the characters were so well defined, and uh, the script writer. It, it was all written, and the script was you know, written and, and refined by Rihanna Pratchett. 
Oh, right. Who is a, a pretty prolific games writer. You know, she's a great author. And, um, you know, she, uh, she's she got a good background. Uh, but uh, but a, an absolutely lovely person as well. So a total joy to work with. And, mm -hmm. and they were up for play too. So if I was, you know, you, you have to get on with it. As much as I love playing and, and having fun, um, you still need to make sure that you get through the script and get through the day. Mm -hmm. But every now and then there's an opportunity for you to <coughs> play a little and, and add a little extra in. And often they would say, that's good, let's keep that. Or we could add that to this bit, or that would be useful for over there or this other character. And, mm -hmm. But um, again, that um, Overlord was one of those games where we did a lot of sessions for, but uh, it was just, God, it was so enjoyable. So much fun. And um, we did, I think, there were, was it three or four Overlord games? There, there were, you know, there was an Overlord and Overlord 2 and then a couple of extra packs and things. But mm -hmm. um, uh, And as well as doing the main character of... The Minion Master, no. There were a whole bunch of other guys too, and you know, like there's was like a kind of like emo guy who was completely. I, forget, oh, I should have checked his <laughs> name for you. I should have seen this coming. I don't remember his name, but I mean, he was wonderful, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. Um, are you are you much of a gamer yourself? I used to be, mm -hmm. and it's funny. I think the more that I've done, the less that I've played. But I still really appreciate them. I really, you know. Love the whole genre of the thing. I, mean, I, I, mean, I was a massive console computer. I started off, my first computer was a BBC Micro in 1984. I'm so, that, I'm that makes me feel sort of stupidly young. I, I don't know what That's that okay. is. That's okay. Well, um, you, know, you know the Spectrum, mm -hmm. the ZX Spectrum. Uh, it was around the time of, the, of, of that. So uh, right. you'd have the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64, mm -hmm. and, the, and the one that was in s schools uh, was a BBC Micro. Right, and it was very. It had a proper keyboard, whereas the Spectrum had a rubber keyboard that was like someone's uh, skin that had been pulled off someone's toe. <laughs> it, it was the the BBC Micro had a really great keyboard on it. Right, um, Commodore sixty four did too, and the, 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 got things like the Amiga and the Atari ST and all these things that came after. But um, the BBC Micro was was great. The only thing was, it could only do I think it was seven or eight colours, <laughs> and it couldn't do brown. <laughs> right, right. So this is this is the world that we were in. You couldn't do brown, and so technically, for certain things, the BBC was superior to other com you know, the other computers around the time. Mm -hmm. But the Spectrum was the one with the games. Right. You know that that's where all the games uh, went because it was a cheaper computer and, and accessible. You know, mm -hmm. and so you know, Manic Miner and Jet Set Willie and all these things. You know, the, 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 these legendary games that they. Uh, they all came from the spectrum, and eventually the BBC got them. But there was a lot of envy. There was, there was a kid down the corner, kid down the road that had a spectrum. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I, I was so envious of some of the games that they got. And like Ultimate Play, the game, like like uh, Night Law and Sable Wolf and Attic Attack and Jetpack and all these things. You know, eventually, they came to the BBC, but oh, <laughs> they somehow seemed better on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But the spectrum had this color clash. So if you had these sprites that went in front of other, if you had these characters that went in front of other characters, there'd be a little color clash. We didn't mm -hmm. get that on the BBC Micro, but the Spectrum could do brown. <laughs> so it was a sort of positive, <laughs> negative thing for both of them. Then. Yeah, you know, God, the Spectrum does brown. How does it do that? It's amazing. But they, um, but then you got these gr you know, breakthrough games like Elite. Mm -hmm. You know what David Braeburn did with that, and, and of course they've just brought that back. Uh, and you know, so there were some pretty revolutionary things they did mm -hmm. with a BBC Micro. How does it sort of feel to look, to know that that was where you started gaming and look at the things that kind of come out today? Like, I mean, just this past week and a bit, they've released something like The Order 1886, which is just... It, it, Astonishing. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Matter. Yeah, it, it's... Well, I think it's like any any form of... It's like looking back on any form of technology or creativity... Now you look at say cartoons now. Technically, what you know, what you're able to do with 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 say just animation. Mm -hmm. You look at the level of refinement of of animation. You know, you look you look at what you know Pixar and DreamWorks and anyone that does amazing CG animation can do with with characters. Mm -hmm. And you compare that to, um, you know, very early 1930s animation, you know, mm -hmm. or, or the early 40s animation, and and. The, the tools get better, the quality gets better, but in the end, the, the thing that still counts are the ideas. Mm -hmm. So as someone that just is fascinated by technology and the way you can connect that to creativity and the way, you know, the, the, the way the, 
the two things aren't particularly necessarily interesting as entertainment without each other. Um, you know, there was there were CGI demos in the early age, you know, the early eighties of what you could do with you know with computer generated graphics. But it's only really for me when I saw Luxo Junior mm. that you go, now that's what this is about. Because <laughs> for the first time, they'd really given it into the hands of a, of a creative person that made it fascinating. Yeah. So to see the way to see the way it's come is is exciting it's really exciting it's like we, we, we you know with with anything um you know even just in terms of making music you know the entry level into making music even just say 10 years ago you'd probably need you know 10 10 15 years ago you'd need a multi-track machine mm -hmm. now you can do it on your ipad you can probably do it on your phone and it just means you know, you know it doesn't mean that your music will be any better mm -hmm. you know if you're a lousy musician and you've got lousy ideas chances are it'll be lousy <laughs> but it might just but you might just be able to um Make it sound a little more a little more palatable with the technology that's out there. Mm -hmm. But but um, I really I I I love seeing what people are doing right now, and I love being part of it too. I, I love being able to be sort of on the ground floor, helping create the character voices or help creating the um, strengthen those those characters and the ideas within whatever it is I I can bring to it. Mm -hmm. But I used to, I used to absolutely love it with the first console that I had. Um, there was a thing called now. This it's a really, if you look at the the Philips G seven thousand. Okay. Right, and it was either mm. the late seventies or early eighties. Mm -hmm. Early eighties. It was the early eighties by by Philips. It's mm -hmm. called the Philips Video Pack. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and and there was the so so you got the Atari you got the Atari, um, you know, home console. Mm -hmm. But there was this Philips one that technically, I think, you know, some of the things it could do seemed better somehow. But the games, <laughs> they were so primitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you remember Teletext? Yes. If yeah, you imagine, yeah. basically, that's the level of quality of the graphics that you had. Right. So, like, Space Invaders, it was really like just moving Teletext. Mm -hmm. Or there was golf. <laughs> you know, there was a golf game, which I used to play that with my dad. Loads and loved it. Mm -hmm. But it's basically something sort of the size of your fist on the screen. <laughs> that, had, that was, that was um, it was basically like if someone had arranged... Um, a series of stamps in the shape of a golfer. <laughs> that was the level of character development, you know, you had for this thing. But it was really exciting. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, but you know, th things like uh, when I was at school, the the thrill of getting a new game for for the Sega Master System. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would be late for the, I would be late for school once because I got uh, I got a car I got a I got Space Harrier. <laughs> Have you ever seen Space Harrier? I can't say I have. Space ever. Harrier? You've never seen Space Harrier? What are you, crazy? <laughs> Space Harrier was this amazing arcade game by Sega. Mm -hmm. Back when arcades were just massive. You, um, I, when, mom, when mom and dad used to take us to Weymouth, in the arcade, I used to love the arcades there. Mm -hmm. so you'd have Outrun, the motorbike game that you sat on an actual motorbike and then played and you tipped the motorbike to the left and the right to make you drive. Uh, well, Space Harrier was actually a simulator that you, that, so you sit in this thing with a seatbelt on and it kind of tosses you all over the place. Uh, and it, it, was, it was amazing. And at the time, the graphics were stunning. Mm -hmm. So uh, take a look at Space Harrier. It's great. But, um, but yeah, they, they did a version of it for the, uh, for the Sega Master System. And uh, oh my God, it was so, I was late for school that day. <laughs> but things have come a long way. <clears throat> So um, you've said already that you voice a lot of cartoon characters. Yeah. I mean, quite specifically, some that a lot of our audience and the people, you know, some a lot of I, stuff. Yeah, well, some that I quite, you know, I, I grew up with. Um, oh God, sorry. I, I remember if I was alive today, <laughs> I'd have, I'd have been dead fifty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think you would ever, you could ever see them being in a game? Do you ever think you could see a? A Johnny Bravo game or another another Scooby Doo game. Or you can have you can do whatever you want with whatever it is. You know, it, it's the, the, your creative options are, are, are as wide as as your imagination. Mm -hmm. There's there are no limits to this stuff. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I suppose I should say <laughs> yeah. So we shouldn't take that as a confirmation of one though. No, uh, not a chance. <laughs> Unless you've got something brewing downstairs. I don't. I I get the feeling we're a long way from that. Oh, okay. Well, you know, um. This is maybe this is like your super secret disguise where by by day you are podcast guy, but by night he is secret program developer. <laughs> um, 
of the past uh, few years, we've we've seen what the press has coined as a sort of indie renaissance. Mm. Um, indie developers really sort of reaching the same level that lots of yeah. AAA have. Yeah. Um, have you seen much of a, a rise in demand from that kind of thing? Yeah. Well, I mean, all you got to do is look 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 to the app store for that. Mm -hmm. I think it, it's really exciting. Uh, I love what's happened with the way tech and the idea of being able to create games uh, in a kind of homebrew way mm -hmm. has come back round really because it, it's almost a resurgence or at least probably w when the app stores first started a few years ago of what was going on with bedroom coders in, in the early 80s you know and things like you know the ZX81 or this or this or the, or the Spectrum or the VIC-20 or the Commodore 64 or any of those things and um, you know you could um, there's a great documentary that I, I bought a, a couple of weeks ago called From I think it was Bedrooms to Billions. Mm -hmm. And it's a story of these bedroom coders. And it takes you through these different businesses and the talent that made these games. And it was just, it, you know, you look at it, it's really kids in their bedrooms, teenagers, people in their late teens, early 20s that went on to be very wealthy and had, you know, big flash cars and never thought maybe I should save a little. <laughs> and then they... It got bigger and bigger and bigger, and you could do that. You could be in your bedroom, have a creative idea, be a really talented tech head, and create something that suddenly became this phenomenon, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, and you got these amazing uh, software houses like like Ultimate Play the Game and US Gold and Ocean and Imagine and, and Superior Software for the BBC Micro and all, the, all these people. Uh, that would just you would go into you would go into you know your Virgin Mega Store or HMV or, or whatever the your nearby computer shop would be, and you would you would you would be excited that there was going to be another thing about to land, mm -hmm. and the reality was it was mostly these bedroom coders, and now with the app development software that's out there and platforms like the Android Store and the and the, you know, the Apple Apple App Store. Um, it's it's brought us back to to that again, where you can do it. But what's interesting, in the same way where back in the early 80s, this thing had a, a life for a good few years, mm -hmm. suddenly then new technology comes out or people get bought out or the expectation is higher. Mm -hmm. And those companies kind of get eaten up by the expectation of, Better graphics, mm -hmm. licenses, all of this. And that means bigger teams or more money or more cost. And then y if you're a bedroom coder, well, you can't be doing that anymore. And um, you can almost see that's happening with the App Store, mm -hmm. where now you go, okay, well, I, I, I liked that little pokey play word drop game that I had, which was probably done by a guy, you know, in, in a couple of weeks in his bedroom mm -hmm. or, you know, a, a, a gr or another a great shoot him up by some you know, t talented woman that just thought, I'll, I'll play that, you know, I'll, I'll give a bit of coding. But after so long, you go, okay, well, I want, I want, a, I want a driving game with better graphics now. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's interesting. What's nice though, is the fact that I think it's brought interest in vintage games and retro games, and, and there is interest in, in looking back at that and realizing mm -hmm. there's still value to that and still being able to enjoy some of what might have been thrown away or, or thought was old hat. Mm -hmm. And you realize at the heart of it, some of these games are still fabulous now, and, you know, like Elite, mm -hmm. which was groundbreaking at the time and, and still has shelf life now. You know, and there's a reason why you where you can still pick up Space Invaders mm -hmm. and it, it frustrate the hell out of you because, you know, <laughs> but you still enjoy it. There's a reason why you can still get a thrill from playing Pac-Man and realize, why can't I get past level four? <laughs> or who am I kidding? I don't get to level four. <laughs> was there was there ever one of those games that was like the ultimate hurdle to beat? Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, well, for, well, I finished Space Harrier. <laughs> <laughs> I finished Space Harrier in the arcade. I was a school trip to Landudno. All right. And they threw us in a butlins in Landudno. <laughs> and there was an arcade right by it. And, you know, I was in heaven because I just wanted to go and play all these games and just, you know. Uh, and when I saw that there was a space harrier there, oh, man. And, uh, and I finished the thing. And um, I ended up having a crowd around me, like uh, this audience. And, you know, you, you see these stories of these... Um, of these you know, arcade legends. It was hardly that, mm -hmm. but I, I finished it. Mind you, it's amazing what a lot of tempees can do. <laughs> you know, 
Do you want to do you wanna continue? You have ten seconds. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But how um, many how many ten p's did it take? I I I probably cleared the bank. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's the savings gone. Um. One one final thing, I suppose. Yeah. This is a a fairly um. As years go for video games, this is shaping up to be a really fairly good one. Uh, mm. Is there anything that you have your 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 voice in that we know about, or is there anything that, if you could have your voice in, of the many announced things that we know are coming, that you would sort of click your fingers if you got the chance to, get, to oh do? Oh boy, uh, there are two things in particular that there's one that we start in March uh, that I can't tell you about, and it's huge. And there's another one that I started work on a week or so back that is huge that they haven't even announced that they're making yet, that when they do, people will be very happy that they are. Oh, uh, right, okay. And, and, um, and it's it's very exciting to be part of something like that. But the, but of course you want to go, I want to tell them! Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you now! But there's there's two of those. Um, there's a project that we're about to do, uh, that we're about to tell the world about um, called Globert. G L O double B E R T, mm-hmm. and it's an interactive cartoon, but it's got gaming elements to it in the fact that it's interactive. But it's something that that um, that myself and an animator friend have created for the uh, for the iPhone, the um, the iPad. And if you imagine a very fast paced, funny, uh, slimy, sticky character that lives in a sewer. Uh, that uh, that just likes peace and quiet, but keeps getting interrupted by noisy things. So you have to squash him down in the direction targeting him like a cannon towards these noisy things and splat the noisy things out the way. And basically, it's just it's an excuse for a load of gags. <laughs> it's 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 very funny. It's very silly. There's uh, there's even a feature in the coding called Tickle Tilly Farts. Nice and uh, yeah, and, and it's it's really <laughs> so targeted really nice. at mature audiences. Though. Yes, but what's cool? It's all stop motion. Oh right, okay. So in the same way that you know, Ardman create a you know a great stop motion thing, or in, in that great sort of, you know Tim Burton style, it's all everything you're you're interacting with was a stop motion set. Wow. So we did everything frame by frame, which took forever. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. And has all kinds of uh, of of you know, uh, challenges to overcome to make it work. But we've created an interactive stop motion character. So so what you're interacting with is a physical model. So it feels like you're pulling down plasticity. You know, it feels like you're you're actually hitting this slimy blob. It feels like you're poking him in the eye or giving him a high five or or tapping on the toilet cistern. You know, it's 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 really good fun. Does something like that Stop me. Sorry to mm. jump in there. <clears throat> Does something like that limit um, the amount of sort of options you have of what the player can do with those imitations of how you're making it? Well, um, yeah, um, yes and no. There's in the same in the in the way that if you're coding something, you can you can code physics into something mm-hmm. so that the you know you could see you could see something that's never been done before if you do something a certain way with a game that's been coded with certain physics involved with it mm-hmm. um you know if you've got a if you've got a marble rolling around on a table and you've, you've you've engineered the physics in the way that you rolling a table rolling a ball around a table would work you could you know it's, it's different every time you do it mm-hmm. well um the limitations in what we've done are intentional because we're telling a story and we're telling gags mm-hmm. so you know you wouldn't want to that they're, they're they're not really limitations they're they're intentional constructions right because you know, if if you if you tell a if you're telling a joke, you know, if, if you set up a a visual and audio gag, it's important it all goes off in the right order. You mm-hmm. know, so if you do this and he hits that, this happens and it rolls to that and you hear that and he hits a sheep. You know, and you know, you know, you know, it's important that all the things go in the right order. Mm-hmm. But every time you play it, it's different. Okay. So there's, well. Many, many, many permutations. So there's something like, was it about 900 gags or something in it? There's loads of audio effects and things. I spent a long time doing all the sound design for it and, and recording a lot of, of, of absolutely crackers sound, sound right, and lots of jokes and lots of silly things. But it's, it's very funny and it's a good giggle. And um, it's, on the, it's in the App Store now for, for iPhone and iPad. G L O B B E R T. 
and we're just about to release an update for it and we're going to give 10% of all that profit to the Brain Tumor Charity as well to help do some good with them. Okay. And, the, and and anyone that can support it would be hugely grateful. The, the more people who can tell about it, that would be great because because the more, we'll, um, the more we sell, the more we can add to it and the more we can... Um, bring in other animators and, and other creative people to give you know to give local people work for that but in the end um it's 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 just a stack of fun <laughs> it's, a, it's it's really good fun cool well there you go uh keep an eye out for that ladies and gentlemen go and support it and tweet it and all that stuff are you at anything we need to know about uh nothing that i should talk about <laughs> so i'm 100 percent sure that i can't wiggle any excuses out of you well uh no. Nope. Fair enough. Uh, well, as soon as I can, though, I'll be happy to come back and talk to you about it. That would be wonderful. Oh, there's a thing called, now, a th- it's either Heretic Shadows Kingdom or mm-hmm. Shadows Heretic Kingdom. Right. And that was out on Steam at the end of last year to, okay. to actually beta test the thing. But um, I've done a, there's about 14, 15 character voices in that. And that thing's growing and that's that's a... That's a big game. Okay. There's a lot of dialogue we're recording for that one. Uh, but the 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 really, really, um, there are others that are really, really exciting as well that I'd, I'd love to tell you about, but I will. Well, I can tell you about them. Okay, well, we'll let... I'd like to tell you about them, but if I did, I'd, I'd be in trouble for telling. You'd have to kill me. I'd have to kill you. <laughs> well, we'll look forward to having you back on uh, when we when we know what they are. Yes. I, <laughs> the conversation like this, I could just make anything up, could I? Yeah. Well, we've all done some amazing new jokes here. I can't tell you about any of them, of course. <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, they'll be involved with him in California and him in London. There's a bloke in Belgium, but I can't, I can't say a word about what it is. The next thing we hear about you, you look like run away to Mexico. I hope so, senor. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you. What, 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 I, I love your big show, showbiz gaming building. Marvellous. Thank you very much. Uh, and until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Cameron, uh, and thank you very much for watching and listening and all that jazz. Uh, but until next time, the game's up. <laughs>